Hello everyone, welcome back to the heterogeneous parallel programming class. We are at lecture 6.2, uh, efficient host device data transfer, and we'll be introducing task parallelism in CUDA. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn task parallelism in CUDA. So far, all the, um, the kernels that we have uh, been writing have been focusing on data parallelism. And uh, now we are transitioning to the subject of task parallelism in CUDA. And in particular, we're going to learn CUDA streams. When we look back a little bit and look at how we um, de developed the vector addition code in CUDA, uh, we use CUDA main copy to copy to transfer uh, vector A and vector B and uh, into the GPU device memory, and then we do the computation of vector addition, and then we uh, transfer the data back. And um, so far, we have been mostly focusing on the uh, development of these kernels and, uh, that perform the computation. But now we're going to shift our attention to more details about the data transfer and then um, uh, get deeper into heterogeneous parallel computing and how we can better coordinate the CPU and GPU to accomplish better performance. When we look at the, the current design, uh, we see that uh, we can uh, roughly divide the uh, time of execution into three components. The first component is we transfer vectors A and B from C host to device or from CPU to GPU. And during this time, only um, one of the directions of the system interconnect, which is the PCI Express bus that we talked about last time, um, uh, only that uh, the host to device direction will be used. And um, it turns out that PCIe uh, buses can actually do simultaneous transfer in both directions. That is, you can have data transferring from the host to device. At the same time, you can also have the data transferring from device to host. So we're uh, only using one direction of that um, bus. And also, uh, the GPU uh, streaming multiprocessors will be idling during that time, waiting for the data transfer. And the second part is the compute part. And um, uh, this is the execution of the kernel. And um, during this time, the, uh, the uh, GPU streaming multiprocessors will be busy, but the PCIe bus will be idle in both directions. And then finally, when we transfer uh, the C vector back from device to host, we will only be using one direction, which is the device to host direction of the PCIe bus, and that the GPU um, streaming multiprocessors will be uh, idle. So if we look at this timeline, it will become clear that at any point in time, we are actually only using about one third of the system resource um, the, in the, uh, the, the accounting for the PCIe uh, each uh, both directions and the uh, stream, streaming multiprocessors in the GPU. So obviously, if we try to make better use of the resources, we could improve the execution speed and efficiency. So this brings us to the, uh, the concept of device overlap. Um, some of the CUDA devices support device overlap. And um, essentially, uh, these devices allow simultaneous execution of a kernel while we copy data between device and host memory. And this, um, the, this uh, support is not universally available in all the NVIDIA GPUs. And um, the way to find out whether a particular GPU is capable of supporting such overlap is through the device query that we, uh, we went over in uh, MP0. So this is just a, a familiar um, a sequence where we can uh, go through all the devices in the system and do a query of their properties. And um, so here we show that um, uh, when we get the device query back, we uh, property back, we can uh, go to the field device overlap um, uh, 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 field to see if uh, that field is true, then uh, the device can support the simultaneous execution of kernel and data transfer. So um, this is a prerequisite. It has, uh, the hardware has to be able to support uh, this kind of parallelism uh, uh, to be able to allow us to improve the efficiency of the uh, data transfer 
in, on top of the kernel execution. So um, with the device support, then uh, we would like to uh, accomplish an ideal, what we call the pipeline timing for executing this kind of um, uh, uh, vector addition type of um, execution. So if we look at vector addition, we see that um, uh, the addition of the elements are independent of each other. So we don't have to uh, do transfer the entire data and do a wholesale vector addition computation. We can easily divide up the uh, vectors into segments. So uh, we can uh, the A will divided, uh, be divided into multiple segments. B will be divided into multiple segments. And we can do the vector addition of these individual segments independent of each other. And this allows us to exploit task parallelism. That is, the transfer and computation of each segment of the data becomes tasks. And then we exploit parallelism among these tasks in order to fully utilize the system resources. So uh, here we show that um, for the first segment, uh, let's say uh, the zero segment uh, of A and B, we transfer these seg uh, uh, A0 and B0 into the GPU, and then we do a compute of the uh, segment, and then we transfer uh, the uh, C0 back. So um, while we uh, well, uh, while we uh, were uh, doing this, as soon as we tra finish transferring the um, A0 and B0, the uh, the resource of the data transfer from host to to uh, device becomes available. So we can immediately start to transfer the um, A1 and B1 uh, segments. So uh, now you see that uh, we can actually overlap the computation of A0 plus B0 and the transfer of A1 and B1. So this allows us to utilize two thirds of the uh, system resource. And the, during the next time period, while we are transferring C0 back into the CPU, we can uh, host, we can uh, compute um, A1 plus B1, and we can also immediately start the transfer of A2 and B2. This is a very nice um, situation where we are uh, fully utilizing the, all the three types of resources in the system. So by dividing the, um, the vectors into these smaller segments, we create a large number of tasks. And these tasks, uh, we, can, we can exploit the parallelism available among these tasks to fully utilize the system resources. And uh, during the next period, we, was, we see that we can, when we transfer C1 back, we can compute A2 plus B2, and then we can um, transfer A3 and B3 from host to device. And this is what we call the steady state of the pipeline. If we divide the data into many, many large, uh, many, many segments, then uh, this kind of uh, arrangement can go on for a while. Um, uh, we can see what was, uh, the next one will be trans transferring C2 back and then computes A2, A3 plus C3 and transfer A4 uh, and B4 from host to device. So this is called a steady state. And then um, to, towards the end of the execution, we'll have a ramp down process where the, we'll have uh, you know, we'll have only the compute, and that uh, uh, we'll, we'll begin. Uh, we're not going to be able to transfer more of the A and B from host to device because we ran out of segments. And then we will eventually have one period where only a C uh, segment is transferred back to the uh, host. So uh, this is a, a ideal pipeline timing that we we'll like to accomplish. The kind of um, speed up that we can get out of this kind of overlap depends on the, um, the relative uh, length of time that need, that's needed to transfer a C seg uh, segment or, uh, and compute an A and B segment or transfer a A and B segment. So I'm showing here that, um, let's say, if the transfer of A and B segment dominates, then um, the total amount of time for one such period is going to be determined by the transfer time of A and B. So we will not necessarily be able to get three times speed up because the execution time is not going to be uh, not going to be divided by three, but rather it's going to be determined by the longest time of the three activities. And this is called a critical path 
in a parallel execution. So uh, let's do some simple uh, um, calculation. Let's say if the, um, the, all the three activities are equal and each account for one third of the time, that is if we look at each segment, uh, the transfer of A and B accounts for one third of the execution time and uh, computation takes one third of the execution time and the transfer of C takes one third of the execution time. Then um, when we do this kind of overlap during the steady state, we will be getting three times the performance of the, uh, of the totally serial execution. However, um, we can also go to another extreme uh, situation where let's say if one of the activities, let's say transfer A and B uh, from host device accounts for uh, let's say half of the execution time and then compute uh, accounts for one fourth of the execution time and transfer of C accounts for one fourth of the execution time. There, uh, with the overlap, now the execution time is dominated by transfer of A and B, which accounts for half of the original execution time. That means that you cannot get more than two times speed up um, uh, with, even with this kind of uh, perfect overlap. So that's why um, it's very important to be, uh, for us to have tasks that are of comparable time in this kind of pipeline um, execution. Unfortunately, um, many of the computation may not have uh, this, uh, you know, this kind of nice match. In fact, in vector addition, um, the computation time is in general uh, much shorter than the data transfer time. So uh, we're going to have you know, some uh, smaller amount of uh, improvement when we do this kind of pipeline timing. But it's a very simple uh, computation so that we can use it to introduce pipeline timing. In general, we will be using this kind of pipeline timing for more substantial computation, such as the uh, convolution, such as uh, you know, but, um, uh, stencil computation in large scale uh, di um, differential equation solvers. In those cases, the computation segment is in general very comparable to the data start transfer time. And therefore, we can get very significant uh, speed up out of this kind of pipeline timing. So this brings us to the concept of uh, <coughs> CUDA streams. CUDA streams is a simple hardware mechanism. It's one of the simplest mechanisms available that supports uh, the exploitation of task parallelism. So in CUDA, um, we have uh, parallel execution. We can support parallel uh, execution of kernels and mem copies with the concept of streams. And each stream is really a queue of operations so uh, uh, these operations will be kernel launches, memory copies, and so on. And uh, these operations are actually um, uh, the, called tasks in the uh, former literature. So these tasks uh, in different streams can go in parallel. That is, if you have operations that belong to different streams, then uh, they could go in parallel. Whether they actually go in parallel or not is subject to the uh, limitations of uh, each practical implementation. So uh, by allowing some of the uh, tasks um, to go in parallel with each other, we exploit task parallelism. So here is a simple illustration of uh, the usage of CUDA streams. So uh, the host thread will make some requests uh, into the uh, in, uh, uh, and label them at, uh, with a stream identifier. So uh, all the uh, uh, requests, all the op, uh, uh, tasks or re, uh, operation requests from a host code will be put into, uh, for the same stream, will be put into a first in, first out queue. So there will be multiple of these first in, first out queues. Each one will accommodate the tasks or operations for a particular stream. And these queues are read and processed asynchronously by the uh, driver and the device. So the device driver will be uh, taking operations out of, uh, or tasks, out of these queues, FIFO queues, and um, uh, in sequence, so, um, sequ uh, or sequentially. And um, uh, so uh, when the, as the host make requests, the oldest one uh, of those requests in the same stream will be uh, taken by the device driver, served, and then uh, when the device driver becomes available, it will come and take the next oldest um, you know, uh, uh, task out of the queue. So um, to uh, allow concurrent uh, 
copying and kernel execution, we need to use multiple queues or multiple streams. And um, so uh, here we show that um, we can, uh, when we make requests to the device driver, the host can actually label these um, tasks or, uh, or uh, requests with different stream identifiers. So they will go into different queues. And operations in different queues now can actually have a uh, opportunity to execute in parallel. And um, whenever we have parallelism, we oftentimes need, need to be able to synchronize. As we learn in data parallelism, we need to have barrier synchronization in order to be able to properly um, uh, uh, coordinate the execution. In the, um, in the tasks parallelism in CUDA, uh, we have events or the sync that allow the uh, host thread to query and synchronize with individual queues or streams. And um, uh, these are called um, uh, CUDA events. So here is a conceptual view of the streams. So we have uh, operations that are uh, kernel launches and main copies that uh, essentially these are API calls uh, in the host code. And as we label them with different streams, they will go into different queues. So uh, in the example of vector addition, uh, we would like to be able to take, to have um, the main copy of the zero segment of the vector A0, B0, and calculation of A0 plus B0 and copy C0 back all into the same stream uh, zero. Because these operations, um, kernel cannot uh, operate until A, uh, both A and B are copied and then uh, uh, C uh, cannot be uh, copied back to the host until the kernel execution finishes. So it's perfect that we have uh, these copy, uh, all these operations in the same stream. And meanwhile, we want to have um, uh, the main copy of A1, B1, the calculation of A1 plus B1, and the copying of um, C, uh, C1 back from device to host to be in a separate stream and that we call stream one here. So uh, now that we have all these uh, operations in different streams, if, whenever they belong in different uh, streams, they could go in parallel. So um, then uh, we, we have the copy engine and the kernel engine. The kernel engine will execute the kernel launches and um, uh, essentially these are the streaming multiprocessors. And then the copy engine are the, uh, is the hardware that, um, that operates the PCI Express uh, up and down. Up means from device to host and down from means from host to device. So um, these copy engines uh, will take main copy uh, tasks from each of these streams and um, uh, put them into work, into uh, PCIe up and down uh, directions. And then the uh, kernel engine will also come to these streams and pick up the kernels for execution so, and so on. So, um, you know, this is the conceptual view of streams and um, hopefully we can uh, exploit a lot of parallelism with uh, the, these streams and with the hardware coming into these different stream queues, picking up the operations that can go in parallel. So in the, um, in the next lecture, we will actually go into some practical considerations and uh, practical host code that make use of the, whole, uh, the streams. So if you'd like to learn more, I would like to encourage you to read more about the CUDA streams in CUDA programming guide, and also go on the internet and um, uh, read up on uh, related tasks, uh, task parallel programming APIs, such as the uh, thread building block, and um, uh, such as OMPSS, OMPS, or the star PU. And these are um, uh, much more elaborate um, programming APIs than CUDA in terms of managing the tasks and giving them the proper priorities and then handling the dependencies in a more sophisticated way. Thank you.